joining us, the head of global investment research at FTSE Russell, is Adrani Day. Adrani, thanks for coming back to the show. Uh, tell us uh, how you guys are thinking about small caps in particular right now and why they've been so volatile. And part two is generally still lagging as everything else got back to all time highs. Uh, thank you. That's a very interesting question, and I think we should link it to the macro backdrop because, as you know, I mean, small caps are generally known to be a bellwether of the economy, and they really outperform coming out of a recession or from the worst of the drought, which then brings us back to this whole question of the markets are increasingly convinced that we are in a soft landing for sure. I would argue that it's a little too early to be sure whether it's a soft landing and not a recession. And why do I say that based on certain indicators that have really worked in the past, meaning yield curve inversion leading to the recession, that time frame, yield curves actually disinverting very shortly before a recession, and first rate hike to the usual period of recession. If you see all these three indicators time-wise, Heading into the first half of 2024, historically, ind indicators would indicate that's the slowest period of growth. And you see that even though growth is really strong so far, but you have seen the deceleration between the almost 5% growth in third quarter to about 3% uh, growth in the fourth quarter, and expectations for whole of 2024 are 1.2%, give or take, meaning the trend is distinctly slower. And I think the small caps really picked that up, meaning... 2023 overall small caps lagged. It was in the fourth quarter that they rallied. There was much more expectations coming up, particularly on the back of the very strong third quarter. So small caps rallied, outperformed in the fourth quarter. Now that you're, you know, the story is again getting into question, and as these indicators that we talked about over and above the fact that, yes, the consumer is still strong, but the consumer is showing some signs of weakness in terms of reducing savings rate, increasing credit card balances, more credit card delinquencies. So if the soft landing story has some question around it, we should maybe wait and watch the first half of 2024 before kind of uh, having a clear answer to the story. Mm. And uh, related to that is the fact that, you know, small caps have again given ground and, you uh, year to date, it's again been a large cap story. I like that. So uh, more economically sensitive generally is the way we should think about this small cap group. And so until we're obviously in the clear uh, for the economy, they would probably continue to be more volatile. Yeah, I mean, they're certainly much more of a bellwether, much more linked to the US economy. So how small caps do really links up to the story. How clear are we, how sure are we that it's a soft landing, not a recession? Okay. Right now, uh, in terms of your guys' assessment of the economy after some good prints, does it look like we are pushing back uh, our runway to get that landing? Does it look like maybe we're still in the air when we're putting out 3% uh, GDP prints after 4% ones? I think a lot really depends how things play out in the first half. So, you know, the indicators that we talked about, those are the things we really need to watch for. And everything in the markets, after all, the numerator, the growth that we talked about, equally important is the denominator, what's happening on the rate story. So the rate story, I think, is another very important point in how markets, uh, you know, go from here in the sense that the fourth quarter rally, a lot of it was because the 10-year yield dropped. The Fed made a clear pivot global many uh, central banks uh, globally also were kind of we are at least done with the rate hike now let's pause and see what happens so i think we should be a little more um, uh, uh, watchful on the rate front and by that i want to point out two things while the fed the policy rate is certainly on a pivot for financial markets what is much more important is the 10 year treasury rate and it's important to remember 2023 we started the 10 year treasury at about 3.9 percentage points we had a lot of rate volatility through the year but we ended 2023 at almost that 3.9 percentage points something we had written about uh, in a paper early 2023 if you look at the drivers and the components of the 10 year treasury yield given where the dynamics of the markets have changed to be, 4, 4.1 does seem to be mathematically where the equilibrium value lands mm. up to be. And I'll just quickly give two more data points. It's not what the Fed 
funds right now is, it's also important to look at the equilibrium long-term Fed funds rate, which it continues to be 2.5 percentage points for sure, but the upper and the lower band of those estimates has distinctly gone up. Mm. When you team that up with the fact that the term premium, not the slope of the yield curve, the term premium in 10-year treasury, it was in negative territory for almost eight odd years, last eight odd years. Now it's come back up to the zero, just about positive, just around zero, which means between the increase in the term premium, which seems a more structural story, and the uh, upward trend in the range of the Fed funds equilibrium range, we are possibly looking at a 10-year treasury yield, which over the next few years might well be in the three and a half to four percentage points, mm. which remember is much more than the two and a half percentage points that they were pretty much in the you know 2011 till 2020 or so. So if the 10-year treasury yield cyclically for quite some years is higher than what it was for many years before 2020, that's another thing that we need to be uh, 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 keep a really close eye on. I like that. So it seems like you'd argue that there's a reason maybe we keep getting stuck around this level that we're at. If that's kind of the, the new normal uh, to be in a range with 4.1, kind of being in that sweet spot. Everybody was wondering for a long time what the return to normal was going to be like. Maybe we've got our answer here, uh, staying at 4.1% on repeat. And Johnny, thanks for the thoughts. Appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Johnny Day, FTSE Russell, head of research. When we